Today's guest, comedian Ronnie Ray. It's time for some Chicago-style comedy on the open highway. This episode is brought to you by Our Weird World. Every week, I, John Henson, dive into weird, crazy, and forgotten stories from the history books that you have probably never heard before. I try to put some humor into it, or maybe I just come off sounding like a dick. That's really up for you to decide. But join me every Monday. Subscribe everywhere that you get your podcasts. Hey, everybody. Eric here. I just wanted to take a moment and thank you for your continuing support for The Open Highway. And I have news for you. The Open Highway is now on Substack. That's right, head on over to Substack where we take a deeper dive into the news of the day, the topics that you hear on the show, or pretty much whatever I'm interested in. The link is in the show notes, so head on over and sign up and now you can be part of the conversation. But most of all, thanks for listening. The Open Highway with Eric Erickson. How you been, man? When did you go out to Chicago? When did you get to Chicago? I moved um, in 2013. Oh, wow. And my grandmother got had a stroke in 2011. And me and my lady wasn't agreeing upon each other. And I needed to get home with the family anyway. So it worked out great. Is that where you were raised? Yeah. Where? You know, I live there, right? You in Chicago now? <laughs> I know not you. now, not now, but I lived there for almost 10 years. I was, oh, I was man. on North side. I got to talk to you about your hat though. We, I, 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 ah, no, I, I, <laughs> I did a show about three months ago and the dude, I think the Sox had just lost in the playoffs. And he was a yeah. close man. He got fucking pissed at me. And I went 20 minutes on this dude the whole time. Like I didn't give a damn. So I was almost about to, we about to fight up there. That's some serious stuff. People don't realize North Side, South Side. That's some yeah, serious shit. Before. I'm like, y'all ain't got a team. What the oh. fuck you tripping off of? <laughs> how's, uh, how's life going out there? It's, uh, it's a little bit different than the West Coast. Yes, the weather is crazy. Um, but other than that, I love it, man. Chicago is my shit, so. Yeah. What's, what's the comedy like out there? Because it's... Ronnie's a stand-up comic. He and I met doing stand-up. Matter of fact, those people who don't know, he actually gave me my nickname. That's so right. That's kind of I, I owe you a nickel. On the show. <laughs> yeah, I owe you a nickel every time someone uses it. So all right, I'll checks in the mail. Um, I'll then you, I'll Venmo you that shit, man. It'll oh, be on the way. <laughs> that's the right now. But yeah, I remember a girl was like, "You know him? You know him? <laughs> <laughs> you gave him a name? Why'd you give him the name? I'm like, well, ask him." Well, how'd you know him? Like, she was like a groupie. I don't know what the hell you know. Hey, but she hey I'll take it. Well, you know, there's a, there was another guy uh, during BLM who had the name who was, uh, he was a anti-BLM activist out in Ohio who called mm. himself the Angry Viking. I had to yeah. send him an email and be like, we need to talk. Yeah. <laughs> you copyrighted and everything? I got my, I got my poor man trademark on it. All right. <laughs> So what's the difference between now you're out in Chicago, like you and I met doing comedy in LA. Right. What's the difference between LA and Chicago? What have you noticed? You get, first of all, you know, all them times I was doing open mics, all them years I was doing open mics and you had to pay to get on. Mm -hmm. I didn't have, I got here like, no, we pay you how much time you want. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what? Okay. So I ain't paid for open mics since I moved away. So to go back there and pay for open mic is like, you know, not doing that no more. They yeah. take a lot of money for me, a whole lot. They got a couple of thousand. They got a few thousand dollars a month. Nice. That's a nice change. Yeah, is it is is it still live? Like, or is is it coming back to life now? Uh, yeah, are people coming back, out to see it? We've been back since um, on a roll since like May. Yeah. Yeah, like May. Um, yeah. So I yeah I've been rolling own show weekly show and my grandmother passed we was talking about her earlier she passed mm. so i've been doing comedy 20 years since yeah. i was in 97 and this is the first time i can actually be a comedian comedian what do you mean 
living out there was different. Like you had to survive, you had to work and still mm. do this stuff. And that's like, I got here, it's like, okay, you can get paid for doing this. And I don't have to take care of nobody no more. So it's like, yeah, okay, go at it now. So as soon as I start going at it, this is how I make my money now. So yeah. Has it changed? Has it changed you? Like your approach now? Because I was listening to a show the other day and you were one of your shows. And you were talking about um oh man, what was it? You were talking about how you gotta kind of rise to the to the level that you're playing at. You know, you gotta look for <laughs> I don't even remember saying that. <laughs> no, you gotta it was a group of your 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 buddies and you were talking about it. And someone was oh. talking about, you know, like it's like if you're gonna go to the open mic, you're gonna perform at that level. And when you get to the right. next level, you gotta get to that next level and still embrace it and enjoy it and be grateful for it, but keep looking up. Keep you looking wrapped all, to kind of kind of... you wrapped all three messages in the one. <laughs> yeah, we all had different things that like the best advice. My advice was to, somebody told me this when I was there and I started going on the road and the guy was like, um, he said, you got to know when to graduate mm. because they will keep you down as long as you okay with being down. Yeah. You would stay at that level the whole time. And after I left that, I remember reading Steve Martin's book and he was like, he, had, he was opening for like the Smothers Brothers or something. And he's like, man, I got to make myself the headliner. He made himself the guy. Mm -hmm. So that's that goes with everything though. No, no one to graduate, man. So um I'm like, all right. So I stopped just when I'm I got back here, I made comedy albums and stuff and whatever, you know, I didn't have to worry about, you know, you can distribute them yourself now. So it's like, let me just drop one and it hit. And I'm like, okay, I think I hit like number three on the chart. I'm like, hey, what's this? So drop another one, drop an EP. I dropped like four EP, <laughs> three EPs, and yo, I love it, man. Yeah, so this is my my this is my income now. So yeah, actor and all that stuff. So I'm like, yeah, I'm actually in show business now after 20 some years of start, almost 25 years now. Yeah. Which is crazy because you were working back when you were out here, but like you said, you had to survive. You know, life's expensive. You gotta, you're not getting paid for the gigs. If you do, what are you getting 10, 20 bucks to be up on stage? I mean, it's not. Yeah, I comedy, I, I'm not even past the comedy store, but I remember they checks for like 15 bucks or something like that. Yeah, you know I mean? like fifteen dollars. You're like here, like yeah. You like, hey man, come out. Can you rock forty? Forty? Yeah, yeah. Let's rock forty. We need twenty dollars or one fifty. Man, I'm coming. <laughs> I'm riding fifty miles, sixty miles to this spot, and these people are fiending for this this love. I think in L. A. They they don't. It's not the fact that you you need them. I mean, they need you. They're they going from the attitude like you need them. Right. You should so be grateful. Like, no, yeah, you should be grateful. And I'm like, okay, this ain't the 80s no more, though. Like, you watch documentaries, and you see, like, how Roseanne got discovered. Like, that, that's that's some Disney shit. You know what I mean? Like, do you hear that yeah. story? Oh, about, no, tell me. Tell me the story. She comes, she's done this stand-up for, like, three years in Denver or something. And she comes to the comedy store for the first time. Now, you've been to the comedy store. You're in L.A. So, yeah, I've performed. I've, I've worked there, yeah. Yeah, so she comes to the comedy store for the first time in her early 80s. Is in the OR for the open mic, pop luck. Missy Shore sees her and says, you need to be in the big room. She goes in the big room. She performs, she kills. Just so happens the Tonight Show booker is there. The Tonight Show booker puts her on the show like three weeks after that. <laughs> she does the show, she kills. Enrique, what's his name? Iglesias, the singer. Mm -hmm. His manager sees her. You want to go on the road with us? She had a fucking job after being in LA less than a month or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, you never know. And I learned this. My, we, I'm working on a one-man show right now. And my friend, sorry, um, my buddy was like, man, you know, show business is rough. Because we did improv together and everything. So he helped me with the show. And he said, um, show business is something. And I'm like, what's your, he said, show business is the only profession that seniority doesn't matter. That's true. I was like, wow, I've been doing this all this time and I never even thought about that. Yeah. Seniority doesn't matter. If you go off seniority, I'll be, I'll be a star like a motherfucker, but it's like, no. There's no apprenticeship for comedy. You can't sit no. down and put in your time. No. Yeah, yeah, so it's like, yo, you need to come in and you, you, got, you got to stick to your guns. If you want to do it that way, just know that way. If it's a hard way, just know it's hard and do it hard. Yeah. I remember when we were doing um, 
we were at some venue and we all had a bunch of the comics were having a conversation. You might have been there for this about how it's a business. And we yeah. forget sometimes that it's a business. And it's like yeah. you have to put in the work. You have to make the contacts. You have to, you know, put in the grind. And, you know, you're a commodity and you have to approach it that way. Yeah, you're the you brand. Like, man, it's, it's, it's obvious now with social media. Like, it's what you put into it is what you get. How's that affected you, the social media? Because you're, you're, you're a little, you're, you're kind of the crossover. Because like you said, you've been doing this 20 years. You've seen the changes. You and I have both seen it, you know, I remember a day where it's like videos, no one's going to no. who wants to sit there and do video comedy and people sit at home. That'll never happen. COVID what's that? Right. You know, it's like everything changed. Right. Um, I was against it. I'm like, man, come on. You, the, the way to get it. I was the old school guy. Like way to get it is this way. Like you shouldn't have just tweeting. What's tweeting? What's, what's <laughs> what is this? Shit? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay. Then you start seeing it. Yeah. They know what I mean? Like, you start seeing it. And then YouTube comes out. And like, I need to jump on this YouTube thing because I don't write sketches and stuff. So before mm-hmm. I leave, this is the story. Before I leave, I did like about like seven, eight sketches. Mm-hmm. My man, Big Job. You know Big Job? Mm-hmm. He used to just do videos. And I just, he was just one, he just did videos for money. So he, one of the guys, one, he was filming my, my videos for me, and one of the guys I was going to have in it couldn't come. So he's like, I'll do it. Don't trip. So he jumps in. We shoot it like eight years ago. We shoot it. We did a bunch, a bunch of other ones. Stop. I moved back to Chicago. I did not release none of these videos. He see, he watches my stuff, edits to me, sends it to me. Like, man, you know what? I'm about to start getting in front of the camera. He gets in front of the camera, a million point six. Only two. This dude's life changed his life. And like, I'm not saying it's me, but like he's destined though. It worked out. And he came here and I picked him up, took him to the airport. And he was just going at me, Ray, you gotta go. You gotta get on these videos. <laughs> so now my brother just graduated film school like a year ago, two years ago. And um, we're just trying to throw out products. So if you see stuff out every day, that started probably like a month ago. But he told yeah. me that like three years ago. So we finally working on consistency. Consistency is important. It's, yeah, we got, uh, it's we, incredible. We, yeah, we were doing it. Excuse the noise. Um, we were doing it, but we were like, do like 10, and then the numbers wouldn't be right. And we, uh, we'll do something else. And then you wait, and then one we do it next week, and one week turns into two weeks, and so on and so forth. And it's like, mm-hmm. everybody's still going. And next thing you know, all these years have passed. We dropped that, that video from them back in 2014. That that long was eight years ago almost. Yeah. And he was he like, imagine, man, said, imagine we were just doing it two videos a week for the past seven years or whatever. Man, we'd be like, man, he like, my mother don't work no more. Just from this. I was like, shit. <laughs> it's what it's the- my, my phrase to the new guys, man, is what you make it, man. It's yeah. what you make it. Yeah, you can go either way. Like it's nobody, there's no God to this. How does it fe- how does it work on you though? Because you feed, I know you, dude, and you feed off the audience. Like you love your crowd work. You love to get in there and get that energy. So how is it different for you from getting you're back on the road now? You're back in front of people, you know, mm-hmm. live audiences. But for a while you couldn't. So did it change the way you structured a joke? Did it strange yeah. change the way you looked at it? It hurt, man. Um damn, when we how long were we out? Was it a whole year? It'll be two, well, it'll be two years since lockdown next month. Yeah, we were out for, damn, we were out for a long time. I did yeah. a show, and what was my first show back? I don't even remember. Oh, damn, it was a year. It was almost a year to the date when we started opening back up. And, um, mm. and, um, Munch, you know, Munch? You know, Munch? Mm, I might. I'm- Munch, you know, yeah, he's, he's back in um, Atlanta, but Munch is with an agency, so he travels. He drives to the spots like much as a, a, a road cop, but he mm-hmm. was close to Chicago. And he called me like, yo, can you want to jump on this show with me? Like, okay, this is my first time out in this town. And I haven't been around people to go out and be around people. And they wasn't like masks. They wasn't, they wasn't wearing masks or nothing. So I'm like, hey, you know, I get sick easy. So I, ain't, I ain't trying to get sick. <laughs> my grandmother died from COVID. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, hey, hey, you know. 
But he didn't care. So I got vaccinated right off. And probably within probably three weeks after that, everything started going back to normal. And yeah. um, I had my show at the Laugh Factory here um, the year prior. And they shut it down because of the COVID. So I moved it to Zany's. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be on this producing game. And now I'm not even in Zany's no more. I'm at this place called Lincoln Lodge. And that's every week. So you're pretty much the... Um, <laughs> The, the master of your domain pretty much because it's yeah. you make it's, it's what you it's what you put in it like yeah. if people come they come like the guy they just pay rent the space out and do it i'm like wow i wish they had this in la they probably do we just didn't know what was that first show like what was it how rusty were you <laughs> come on when i performed you, you mentioned it me and me on stage uh yeah if i can see the audience mm -hmm. i'm talking to the audience and if I can get some jokes out of there, yeah. But now it's like, if I'm going a long time, I'm trying to like find the rhythm on stage. I'm not about to go into the bit for bit, bit. I'll never do that again. I can't do yeah. that again. No, so it, it felt weird. I had them, you know, I had them towards the end and we were done. And then Munch goes up. And it was the polar opposite of my stuff. He has an act. He had a yeah. whole act set. And he went on for hour 40. I'm not kidding. He just went on and he had all this joke. And he had jokes from when we met him back in 2008. I'm like, shit. He was just doing them. And these people were like, they were into it, but it looked like he was on stage. I don't care. He's like, I don't care if you ain't paying attention. Yeah. I'm going to do my act. And I'm not like that. If I'm in a small room and we're together and you interrupt, I'm going to stop my show and I'm going to talk to you and then we're going to get this right. So... So now I had, to, I had to teach myself, like, okay, when I'm doing a set, try your best to stick to the jokes. But if I'm yeah. hosting the show, I don't use material at all. That's what hosting is all about. You got you to gotta be able to move and be flexible. And right. And I'm an improviser. So I started off with improv back in 97, um, Second City. So I, that's how I got to LA. I was with a group. So that, oh, I that's how you did that? Yeah. I never knew you were in Second City. Graduated, they gave me. <laughs> Wait, when were, when were you there? When were you there? Uh, 97 to 99. I, I, you know, I, that's one of the times I was in Chicago was from 97 to, to no, end of 98. And I used to go to Second City. I was there. There's a good chance I saw you on stage before we even knew each other. Right. Isn't that kind of crazy? A, I was just in a class. Maybe. Well, I was in a class. You didn't do any of the, you didn't do any of the stages? No, no, we did the stage. We did um the graduation. We did the stage on um, the the smaller room, not the main stage. Oh, the main one. Yeah. yeah, I didn't do. I did the main room once, and uh, but yeah, I was a student, so it's like they didn't, you know, we were nothing. We were tuition money, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> did that, and they gave us a slice of pizza, some beer, and a T-shirt that didn't fit. And <laughs> I don't have. Do you still have it? it? It's somewhere in the back. It's, in the back there. it's like a medium. I know damn well I ain't fitting that shit now. So. I think it's it's interesting what you brought up about um, having that one and like you're. He has the hour and a half of like rehearsed material. It's almost like a one man show. You know, it's like yeah. it's worked. It's put together. Do you remember back when um, Josh Nazar was working on his stuff? And that's a good example. Like you and I were working working our routines and you were way ahead of me and I was just starting out and Josh came in and Josh, we watched Josh build an entire routine that he still uses to this day, bit by bit by bit. And we watched it from the, the concept all the way through him working out beats, working out lines. And it was just, it was like watching a show being created versus like when you got up, you were trying out this worked, that worked, you were, you know, riffing and working the crowd. It's right. it's a different style. It doesn't work for everybody. It doesn't work for everybody. No, it doesn't. I've seen people try. And it just, if you don't, if you don't feel it, you can't do it. But I, I started doing that. I, I got that from Bruce Lee. You did from the, yeah. the riffing? He, no, just, um, it was, um, the, are you a fan? Are you a fan of Bruce Lee? Uh, it's not that I'm not a fan. I'm just not as familiar with him as you are. Okay. Um, he did a, the movie De Game of Death. Oh, Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee, Bruce, Bruce Lee? Lee. Bruce Lee. Oh, I thought you were talking about someone else. Oh, Bruce no, not Lee Bruce is. Lee at the uh, restaurant right down the street. No, Bruce yeah, Lee. Yeah, I, like, I was like, is this a new comic I'm not aware of? <laughs> the, the guy who created Jeet Kune Do, um, Game of Death, had these extra scenes 
mm -hmm. that they didn't put out. So I saw a documentary and they showed you all the scene put together because he died, he wasn't able to complete it. And um, when he's about to fight one guy, he had like a, uh, what do you call them things? Some trees, Asian the trees. Nun the nunchucks? What country, you um, whatever, it was, it was a stick that couldn't be really broken. And you ain't oh, know, okay. it was like a, like that. So the guy had like a, uh, some sticks or something. And he was like, um, what do you say? He said, um, a rehearsed routine can never beat broken rhythm. And I'm like, hmm. yo, that's true. Yeah. So I'd rather not know what's going on. When I like yesterday, I'm hosting I host the show. I have to go, me and my brother had to get this room together. I have to take the tickets down. I have to take like three minutes to get my hair right. And I jump on stage. I do not write material down before I go on there. And I'm not even thinking, man, remember back when you started? You be like, oh man, I gotta go up here. I'm not concerned about them people. Like <laughs> they should be, you gotta be arrogant. Like, yo, y'all lucky to see me right now. So this is what people <laughs> gonna do. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna rock this show and I'm gonna bring these guys up and that's it. But I gotta get back to the material. I gotta fall back in love with the material too. Cause I've gotten too comfortable with that. What do you mean you gotta fall back in love with the material? But I'm bored. I haven't sat back and wrote jokes like that. You know what I mean? Like you said, yeah. Josh had an act. I don't fucking act. Like, no, I'm like, it has to feel it. So now we I'm about to start dropping probably a comedy album, whatever, like every yeah. five months. Like every five but Josh months. had a style. Josh has a style. Like he's a he's almost he's almost like a cat skills comedian. He's got that, you know, rehearsed patter. He does his little jokes. He has his car uh his, his TikTok thing now where he pulls oh, up to people in their car. He's yeah, he's got like he's got perfect. It's point. incredible. You know, it it works for him, that style. You know, I can see you going down the street and insulting people and then recording that. That might go. <laughs> I'm not, you know what? I'm not even that kind of guy though. I, when, I, when I gave you angry Viking, I was nice to you. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> I, even when I insult people in the audience, I'm damn near complimenting them. Like, I never wanted to come across as an asshole to people. I want you to come back. And after the show, I want to be able to talk to you. I'm not going to offend. My, God, my job is never to offend. Has comedy changed in that way, you think? Like, it doesn't feel now that you got to walk a little more carefully with, with where the jokes land. Have you found that? Yeah, you some just... of the stuff. The written stuff, yeah, because I go deep with the written stuff. Yeah. I remember I walked a family. <laughs> I walked a family out of the club one time in the world, man. Uh, had this joke about, this is a true story. Girl, then the girl having sex, she had a small room and a baby was in there. And I'm standing up in the walkway and she's on the bed and the baby, I'm like, I'm hitting it from the back and the baby touches me on my shoulder. And I'm like, what the fuck? I stopped. You know, so the people, the lady got up, oh my God, that's disgusting. We're leaving. She had a, like teenage daughters. Like we, I told y'all when the show started, we are not about to be PG out of this thing. But the husband liked it. So he just had to leave because he was driving. But so- This is out in Aurora? Yeah, Shrine. Um, oh. Shrine. No. They moved across three since that day, but that was like about three years ago now. What's, uh, so who are you watching now? Like what, who's getting, uh, who are your favorite comedians right now that are on their way up? Anybody that- uh, Up and coming guys? Yeah. Oh, well, shit, man, obviously, you know, my, I gotta go with my friends. <laughs> you know of saying? course. Yeah, you know, the well, Delia is somewhat, he's made it already, so they, they can't count him. Um, yeah. Tony Baker is my, my guy. Oh, Tony's been, what we watched Tony, I remember when Tony was just starting out. Yeah. That's Tony. another great rise. Like, that's another guy who really took, just took it by the reins and said, this is how I'm going to, how I'm going to do it. We're really proud yeah, of Tony. So, he was so, he was definition of consistency, man. Because it was mm -hmm. like, we used to make fun of him. Like, you talk about the social media stuff. Like, dude, what are you doing? Like, I got I to gotta tweet this, man. We'll be going to a show through the mountains. And he'll have to, <laughs> he'll be driving. And he'll be on the stairwell wheel on his. <laughs> like, dude, we don't have an act. I got to tweet this, dog. I'm like, come on, man. But he's just, that's what he is. And um, it paid off. Yeah. Go so see him. Like, I went and saw him. Um, he came to Chicago and told me he was here. And um, no, I knew he was in town one time and I went and seen him and he was like, he did it. He's on social media so much. Like you forget, he's, he's, he's somewhat famous. He's a famous guy. Yeah, he is And now. he said a line from one of his videos and he might as well 
had the glitter glove and did the moonwalk because they freaked out. When like, I, they ne- I never knew. Like, oh! <laughs> I'm like, holy shit. Then he came back another time. He said he was at the Laugh Factory. We stayed on the front talking. He would run by, Tony Burger. They, they screamed. I'm like, yo. But then he backs it up on stage. So him, uh, Ron G was just here. Mm. Um, Sam Conroe, Keenan Baker, Keenan, Keenan travels with Tone. That's my little, that's my little bro. Um, and Jeremy Scipio's killing. It's a lot of guys. A lot of. Do you think it's gonna come back? Like, do you think in an, if we can get past all this, we're gonna start seeing tours again, and we're gonna start seeing some of the larger venues and stuff. People still, people still tour though. Like, there's some certain cities just locked down, but you go like, I go to Wisconsin. They yeah. don't care about none of this shit. They don't. I mean, dude, California is like it's a whole other country now. It's a whole. It, it's bizarre. You know, it's um, between mass mandates and you know government and everything. It's just we hear. It's almost like we hear stories. It's like you know, in other states, you don't have to wear your mask. That's impossible. I don't believe yeah, that. Right. that. That's not true. <laughs> it's like it's it's like an urban legend that other parts right, of the country right. are functioning. Right. No. And they, they. Yeah. It's certain places you go and. Then, I don't like having COVID conversations with people because they you don't know what in they own and shit. Like what? The oh fuck? god, it's just. Remember, growing up, don't talk about politics. Don't talk about religion at the dinner table. Now it's you don't talk about COVID at the dinner COVID table. COVID is right there with it. It's like it's ridiculous. Yeah. What's uh? What do you? How you feeling? Do you hear about the Joe Rogan stuff going on with uh with Spotify and and uh, Neil Young pulling the music and all that stuff? No. What happened? Oh yeah. We. Joe Rogan's show, he's just getting called out for being so controversial. No, you know, but they label. On, that's exactly. But now now musicians are pulling their music from Spotify in protest because, because they're like you, they're like, you need to censor him. You need to, you need to, you know. So he came out the other day. He's like, look, if you want to put a disclaimer on the show, I get it. But he's like, I'm just having conversations with people. We're just talking. The artists, man. That's the sucky part about all this shit. I saw uh, Prince talk about that. Like they they um there's a documentary on him. He was talking mm-hmm. about how, um, you know, yeah, you make the music like you do. I'm in the studio working, and you know, you you're freer when you're working by yourself. Like, yes, like it's cool to be a free artist. Because as soon as you give it to them, ah, no, that's not right right now. Like, no, you should do what you feel is right as an artist, mm-hmm. and that's what they pay for. They was having them conversations long before this shit. If he wasn't, it's because of the COVID shit came, and he doesn't agree with that. But that's each his own with that, man. You can't make people. Yeah. You shouldn't make people have to take the vaccine and none of that shit. Like I'm, I, I'm vaccinated. So it was like I don't, I do it because of the shows I was just said. I told you, people all in your damn face, and I get sick even. So I'm like, yo, this, this, will, this will eliminate that. So if I'm wrong, fuck it. But if I'm right, great. So no, I'm not. Yeah, if I can get in the spots and do shows, but you gotta show your vaccination, vaccination card when you go out now and shit. So I'm glad I got it. Yeah. But I don't, I don't knock people who don't. That ain't none of my damn business. What the hell you do? Do you ever sense you? Do you ever censor yeah. yourself? No. Like when you're doing comedy, is there any is there any line? It's just because of who you are. I believe the artist should be the artist, but I, when they tell me not to curse, I feel like I have to. I remember one time I did a show here. I did a show here, uh, uh, Kankakee, and it was an all women's thing. My buddy set it up for me, and I took a comic with us. He's like, "All right, man." Oh, uh, there's no microphones and there's no cursing. I'm like, no microphones. No cursing, what? So I'm like, okay. I have a joke when I talk about my nickname. And my nickname is Bougie. The joke goes from me not liking my nickname, but I got a buddy who loves his nickname, and his nickname is Porch Monkey. And I I go through a whole act of me calling him by his real name. He gets mad at me. And I'm like, uh, he like, hey man, how many times gotta tell you, man? It's not Jamal, it's Porch Monkey. P-O-R to monkey, motherfucker. So, <laughs> so I didn't say motherfucker because he said not the curse. I said, God damn it. The lady after the show had a problem with me saying, God damn it. She literally stepped in front of me and like had me like stand on the side, talk to her, like, you shouldn't be saying God's name like that. And blah, 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 blah. I'm like, so motherfucker would have been better? Yes, it would have, but they said not the curse. Well, you have to change something else. Like, who are you, first of all, like, to tell me what I can't say? 
You know what I'm saying? I'm not, you know, when my mom is in Chicago, I was in Kankakee, Illinois. Fuck that. You can't tell me shit. Well, I respected her that day. You know what I'm saying? But thinking about it, like you just said, that was the last time I was ever questioned on anything. That's insane. That's like, that's like we have that whole thing where you can show, you can't show sex in, in a movie or else it gets rated hardcore. But you can show all the violence that you fucking want. You can blow people's heads off. You can do whatever. Like, oh, PG. It's a show called Euphoria. Have you seen this shit? I haven't seen it. The one with Zendaya? Zendaya, and shout out to um, Nika. Nika did stand up at Marty's with us, too. She plays the mom. Oh, um, this, this show had more frontal on guys than I ever seen. In any fucking thing. I'm like, what is this shit? Like, yo, the writing is incredible. The direction is dope. The, the lighting is amazing. The fucking frontal. Every show. Why is this necessary? I, I, I'm telling some girl this. No, nah, but we've been showing up. No, you guys are not with your pants off, panties off, spread ego every fucking thing. <laughs> this shit... I'm every fucking show, man. Every show, dude. Every show, Eric, man. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Really? Last night, fucking, you don't watch the show? Last night. I don't watch it. I, don't, I haven't seen it. I, I, fucking no. father, I'm not going to tell you too much. The fucking father was, was confessing some shit to the kids, and he's standing at the bottom of the stairs, and they at the top, him and his wife, and he got his dick out. Like, why you got your dick out giving the monologue and shit? It's necessary to have your dick out doing the monologue because you're sure. Why the fuck are you doing? I'm like, dude, I'm trying to watch a good ad program and you fucking got your package out. Well, should it be equal time then? It should, but they show like women's, but that is not, it's over the top. <laughs> it is over the top. Dude, I'm telling you, if you watch it, you warn, goddammit. it. Because I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Even the first episode of the season, it's the second season. I mean, and they ain't like, you know what I'm saying? Anybody, you a man, dicks out. You don't think it's vital to the story? You don't think it's got to be this, this like, okay, I'm going to tell you how babies are made. No, <laughs> no. Then dad's on drugs. So it's all like rough, rugged, you know what I mean? They live in this fucking city. I forget what the fucking city they're in. But they're in this fucking city and it, it's just rough. You know, you got some rich kids. It's like high school. It's like, the, it's like saved by the bell. <laughs> saved by the bell, the dark side. That's what the fuck that is. The dark side saved by the bell. With dicks out, but that was the fuck they doing. Did you see uh, uh, Megan Fox the other day posted some photo of herself because she was a they're angling to get her on the show. Oh, and what she's show? all show? she's like, I yeah, she's like, I can play the lit teacher, and here's how the lit teacher dresses, and she's wearing like something out of it. It looks like she stepped off a porn set. It's mm. just like you know, sexy librarian look, and they're like, Yeah, she should be on the show. Oh wow. and you know, That's and then they showed pictures from the show. I'm like, this looks interesting, but the way you described it, I, I think I can deal without the pickle fest. Quite yeah, honestly. it's a pickle fest. Hilarious. The sword fights. Uh, but I'm sure it's an amazing show. It's incredible. <laughs> the writing is incredible. Because, like, what the fuck? Like, I'm into that. Like, I'm, I write shit. So I'm like, okay, what's this? You know what I mean? I want to know how this shit goes. I'm like, yo, that shit. Like, it's crazy. But then they start showing it. I'm like, all right, I can take one, two. All right, cool. Let's go ahead. Show it. All right. Can you go imagine ahead. being an actor, getting your sides, and be like, you walk into the room, pulls out his dick, on... asks them what they want for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I worked on Playboy TV, man. Like, what the fuck? Like, I didn't see, even on there, we didn't have that shit like that. <laughs> had one fucking guy who walked around naked all the time. That was it. This shit is the next level. They trying to prove something with this shit. Oh, you, that's what, is there an agenda? I think so. The way they doing it, every, he could confesses some shit to his family with his dick out. I don't understand why is that necessary. <laughs> I can't believe you're talking about my people's dicks for the past four minutes. But it doesn't matter to be said. That was the last thing I watched last night. Like this shit, all right, I can't even sleep. This is bullshit. Oh, I watched Dune last night, so it's not quite the same experience with Zendaya. So it's no, it's like, no. you know, it's a little, it was a I little different. Spider Man in December, shit. Then. <laughs> No, she definitely wanted to step out that fucking kid shit because she, yeah, at the top of this show, she getting a pussy ache. Like, yo, well, she fuck? won, didn't she win a Golden Globe for it or she won yeah. something for it? She She's won a really... Emmy. Fucking Emmy. Yeah. 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 She's dope, but damn. You used, didn't you used to do, you used to do, um, was it Nickelodeon shows? I did, um, I did, um, Victorious. I did okay. one. Yeah, but it's good for the credit. So 
Yeah. Nickelodeon and Playboy TV. Yeah. You can't put me in one spot, man. Come on, man. I was like, that's oh, right. Oh, dude, I'm going to – how to pigeonhole Ronnie Ray. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he does kids shit too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was so funny. I remember when – um. I seen what's her name? She hot right now. Shit, she's incredible. Uh, what's her name? Grande. Oh, Ariana. Grande. Yeah, she was on the show. Mm -hmm. And I looked at her like, "You're gonna be a star, a fucking star." And shit, and I ain't know. Oh she, yeah. And I, said, I know she was singing. She killing this shit. I'm like, this girl been killing it for a long time. But it's amazing, good. amazing that they come up with all the all those kids. Yeah. You know. Um, David Deloise is a friend of mine. So he was on uh, Wizards of Waverly Place. And, you know, mm -hmm. you got the kids that came up out of that, Selena and everything. You know? Damn. Yeah. It's, uh, it's insane. So, wait, wait, so you're doing, how many podcasts are you doing now? You just do yours? Um, bu 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 we just, I just started the, the, um, the station back up. I just started the yeah. station up. So we just started dropping that show, um, It's the Ryan Ray Show. It's just mm -hmm. second me doing stuff on me. We got the video stuff with that. And I got Q&A coming back. I remember I asked you a few years ago to be on it. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. You're you doing that again. Yeah, we're going to do it again. I'm going to probably start that real soon. This is motivation, definitely. Um, and I got another one. We recording the day at five. Uh, Pony Drunk Hilarious. Uh, me and my two comedy friends here are doing it. And yeah, we, uh, <laughs> the, the, the titles fit, all three of us. Um, yeah, the, is it a station? So you're doing a platform? You got multiple shows? Yeah, I have um, uh, Other Dogs of Comedy Network. That's the name of it. So I haven't really like promoted it yet because I'm trying to get it right. So we got that. I had relationships. Um, I did with my ex-girlfriend who was a cam model. Hmm. Um, we did that. And that that got more hits than 80 of my episodes of Q&A. Just the 10 of those that we did. You know what I mean? So yeah. thinking about doing that again. And um, I had Growing Up Shot, um, Growing Up in Chicago. Anything that happened in Chicago, we did Chicago. Yeah, so... Do you, I got a lot of stuff I can do. Is it so when you do it, do you kind of is it kind of a one and done? Do you kind of just do it and get it out there, or do you look into it and do you try to learn from it and try and improve or somewhere in the middle? Um I listen to it. I don't really listen to a lot. I don't really go back like that. Um, I yeah. listen to other people's stuff. Like today I'm watching Mad TV because I want to old episodes of Mad TV just to get sketch ideas to get yeah. back on that. Cause I told you I do I'm trying to build up that um YouTube following. And yeah. yeah, I do research. I listen to old episodes sometimes to see where I messed up at. And but I had some great interviews though, man. Like it's it I didn't realize how important it was until um, my man Foo Johnson died. And um he was a guest on my show. Mm -hmm. And it was like, damn, he died and I got a chance to interview him. You know what I mean? Like out of all the people that was on the show, he passes away. And it was like out of the blue, and he had just hit me like a month before. Like tell him he wanted to come to Chicago and do some shows. So to find out he passed away, I was like, damn. Then I went back and listened to the interview. It was like, oh shit. Like, yeah. So it was like, yeah, it's that show, QA and Ronnie Ray is my my thing for like inside the actor studio. Cause everybody's not gonna get you ain't gonna get on the show now because James Lipton is dead, but rest in peace mm -hmm. with James Lipton. But he gave me the idea. Yeah. And it was like, okay, everybody get their moment to talk about mm -hmm. themselves. You know what I mean? It's like everybody getting to know them and all these super dope people that I know. So, um, and I didn't realize I knew that many people. You know what I mean? Like, there's comedians and shit. Like, then you look back at it like, okay, this guy's here and this person's on this show. And this person, I was just saying Euphoria with uh, Nika playing the mom and uh, yeah. All American, that show on- um, On CW. Yeah, CW, the mom, um, Karima was on my show and um, Sean Kerrigan was on there and shit. So I was like, wow, you know, you got all these people that, you just don't know, like kind of like catching them early, you know, yeah. and to hear the story beginning of it, man. But I always seen it, you know, I always know. I try to, I, I, I think that's a gift. I think I know when I see people like, yo, they dope. They so you trying to do, are you trying to do longer conversations with them and, and get in and- Yeah, really we got like at least, I've done between the times of 45 minutes to an hour and 40. Yeah. Some people, some people it's just, it just conversation just goes. People yeah. like it. I, I really find that people they're sick of these little like 90 second snippets and they want to get to know the person behind the right. entertainer, right? You know how they feel about stuff. And, right. and it's not even and when, for me, it's not even about you, you guys promote my show because y'all own it and I can get y'all fans. It's never been that shit. Never mm -hmm. like, yo, I just like doing that. I, I'm doing it because I like hearing about people's backgrounds. 
Yeah. I, my favorite kind of books to read uh, biography. They're like, okay, where did, where, did it, where did it click that you're going to be this? Mm -hmm. I want to know when that happened. You know what I mean? So I always, I like going back to the beginning and lead me, take me on a ride, man. And I want to hear about this shit. You yeah. know? So, and it, it registered to me because I had my partners interview me after we were done and he didn't interview me like I interview other people. I'm like, dude, what, what the hell are you doing? So uh, how you feel about that person dying? Like, dude, that's not what we're talking. Just get to the, talk about the career and where I'm going. Cause that's what I do for everybody else. Like, so I'm gonna have to probably like <laughs> interview myself. I actually got a one man show coming out, me talking about my life. Well, oh, when's a live one? Yeah, um, in May, May here on uh, CIC Theater, May 6, 13, 20, and 27. Yeah. Are you gonna tour with that or just do local? No, my goal is to, to you know, kid overseas, man. I gotta use this passport, go somewhere. So, oh, I want to yeah. See, so, and it, I want to set me apart from all the other comedians like and actors and stuff I'm, I'm more than just a stand-up so i want to just exercise all that yeah do people come to you with it looking for advice do the young comics old comics like do they ever come to you and they're just like fuck i don't know what i'm doing help me ronnie help me i, I, help I, me. I did not man and i'm not even trying to pat myself on the back bro i did nah, not it's not about patting you on the back but it's like you have a wealth of knowledge you you you're you're an old soldier man you got you've been up on stage you know how it works there's oh. a mechanics to it you know right right people um, can learn from you i was getting that probably year five out there stand up wise mm -hmm. i didn't start doing stand up till i was like 29 so i'm like 34 35 years old mm -hmm. and you don't i did not know i left the impression on people after i moved away when I go back and visit, it's like, yo, man. Or oh, I'll do an interview with somebody I haven't talked to. Man, I gotta tell you, man, you told me that you just keep going or change this joke to this. And like, it was because of you, man. I'm like, what? Again, I don't do it for that. Yeah. But I do get calls from people. <laughs> Sometimes, I'm not gonna say their name. It <laughs> called, man, I bombed last night, but we gonna be all right. Like, we gonna be all right. Like, <laughs> I didn't bomb last night. <laughs> that's all you. That's you. Like you only call me when something bad happened. Like did I see you like somewhere else and you don't even mention my ass? So it's like you're like oh. new phone. Who this? I have no idea. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, don't call me talking about bombing. I don't want to hear about that. Um, but no, I, since I've started, I say that it's been. I had a few guys. My guy Zoe used to call me all the time. I told him this. Um, I used to host the comedy store, crack them on Thursdays on um mm -hmm. the comedy store. And um, I got him on the show. So he used to perform up there like every other week or so. And when he does well, well, whenever whenever he feels like he needs to tell me something, he calls me regardless of what time. I'm going to be laid up with my lady at like 3 in the morning. He called me up. He did well. He's like, Ray, I killed it tonight, man. I'm like, I was there, so. But man, I killed it, man. No, you're like, he just, I'm like, but man, then he had bomb. Like, man, what do I need to do? So yeah, it's, yeah, I don't, yeah, I, don't, I, I like, I always, I used to always be the young guy in the group. Mm. So to be the elder statesman of the thing, it's, it's a switch, definitely. So, did you, yeah. Did, they, you, they did, you ever, did you ever do um, Crazy Cindy shows? Ah! <laughs> hey, I gave Cindy everybody's name. That's how I got over stuff. there? She did, yeah, yeah, probably. I, I blame <laughs> you? Yeah, yeah, everybody should blame me because I gave her everybody's name that I knew because she saw me at the ha ha and asked that I want to do a show. And I'm like, I can't do it that week, but I know some people. Like, well, you got a list of people. Let me know. They were a list of fucking names. And yeah. I had people come back and complain to me about that shit, but it was yeah, a weird show. show. And, yeah. She, Crazy <laughs> Cindy was a weird, was a, it was an interesting experience. Yeah. I gave her the names. I go to the show. She didn't even acknowledge my that sounds yeah, right. Like she know who the hell I was. I'm like, yo, okay. So I gave you half your roster. You know, most of your roster and shit. So, no, I never done a crazy Cindy show. Oh, they do. We would go up at like two in the morning. Two, like those shows went all night, and then Cindy would come out, and she, she was hosting, and she would literally do 20, 25 minutes in between sets, mm. and and it was just 
different material. Like so much of it wouldn't land. And, and they were literally people just like, bring on the next comic, you know, <laughs> she, it's her show and she's getting right. ha um, heckled. And it was, you know, it was a, a weird little experience. That's part of the reason I kind of stopped doing it was these like three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning things performing to three or four people. You got to love it. You got to, you got to want it with every ounce of your being. And I'm just like, there's other people that, uh, that could use this time. Right. You know? No, you got to love it. Man. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, being back here though, it's, it's it it I almost quit being back here because I didn't want to start over. And mm -hmm. I salute the podcast. Cause when I started doing the podcast, I'm like, okay, now nah, I get back in. I need to go back and just start doing comedy on a regular basis. So yeah, it just slowed me down a lot. I wasn't out every day like that. You yeah. know, so I had to miss it a little bit. Then when I did the podcast, it's like, oh, okay. I'm going back to my talking to the people I haven't talked to in a long time. It's like, oh man, yeah, this happened. I remember this story. Like, yeah, I want to go back and do it. So, like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it my way. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about the powers that be. Like, I'm always have my own. Yeah, I advise anybody that. Like, when if you, I will always do my podcast. I will always do my sketches. I will always do my own shows. Whatever you got for me is extra, because I don't want to have to wait. Like right now, a friend of mine told me he got a TV show in Atlanta. I understand he's probably busy right now. He said he's gonna call me this month. Months over tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm not worried about it because of my attitude. Like, okay, well, I'm gonna still do my thing. And you call me, you get time, let me know. I'm gonna hit him up like everything okay, you know, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Cause I, I know I've grown from that. Cause back in the day, I'd be pissed. Yeah, he said he's gonna call. What? And then I used to be that, like that with my shows. Like, man, he said he was coming to the show. Man, I saw him standing outside. Like, he could have came to the show. Like, I don't care. You can't count on that. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta hustle, man. You gotta have your own. You gotta hustle, and you just, like it, it, things happen. Like, you just gotta respect it. But the show gotta happen. My name on the marquee, I will get there. Yeah. No one's up there. That's all that matters. I don't care who's in that stuff like that. You just said those two people in the audience, stuff like that, the Martys and all that stuff. That helps. Yeah. You go out of town and they probably misschedule it and like they had like um <laughs> little people wrestling the day before and they forgot you were coming and you get there there's like three people in the audience you got to entertain those people mm -hmm. that's the job that's what we signed up for so yeah I just gotta I had to get back used to that but I don't want them ever have to no nah, I can't do that no more man if what? I move back to L A it wouldn't even I don't think I do I don't think I even do open mic if I gotta pay. That's what I was just asking you. It's like, what would it take to get you back to, to LA? A job. <laughs> <laughs> series regular. <laughs> series regular, a uh, writer on a show, some voiceover cartoon shit, whatever, but... Um, You're happy, man. You're happy in Chicago. I'm, I'm happy here, man. Um, But the thing is, it feels like I'm not finished out there, though. I still want my name on the comedy store wall. You know what I mean? Just little minor things that I promised myself. Yeah. That's one of the things I promised myself. I like, I get that. So when I was at on Crack 'em Up, I was there almost three years and did not occur to me that it was a produced show. So I didn't even qualify to get my name on the wall. Oh. And I'm like, oh, so how you get in here? And you're like, oh, we got to come do the OR. We got to recognize you and blah, blah. Okay. So I told the guy and I did a couple of those shows and he's trying to haze me. And I'm up there like for four weeks to like two in the morning. They wouldn't put me up. They come to find out, dude is a racist. He got fired. I'm like, wow. So I'm the only guy he was messing with, though. Because nobody else black in there. I think Ian was the only dude at the time. Now they, they passing everybody. Yeah. Yeah, so I was like, that, that's... But I do want my name on the wall, though. When was that? Back... What would that have been? Oh. Like 10, 2010. Okay. No, I remember like that. eight. It's like eight. 2008, because okay. I had I had just started doing the Playboy show too, and I had quit the show, and I told him I wanted to do something else, other level. Yeah, and like, come up here and hang out. I'm up there hanging out, nothing, hmm. nothing. Then he saw. Then I'm up there with a friend of mine, and he's doing potluck, and I'm like, I'm just going with you. I just want to watch, and he signs my name on it, and I get called. I get on the list. I go up and do the three, four minutes. Right, I walk out to the you know the, the walkway in the back. I walk out, I see guy. Hey man, I saw your name on this, man. I had to put you up, man. You fucking killer. What do we need to do to get on this show, man? Man, just keep coming back and hanging out. 
They ain't doing this anymore, man. What the fuck? Yeah. That's the problem. Huh? That's the problem with comedy. Like you're like you're saying, there's no there's no path. There's There's no no if you do if you do A, B, and C, you will get to D. It's not that way. Right. It's not that way. It's not just talent. It's not just ability to, you know. People don't realize that some of these shows are called bringers. And you have to go to some and and you're not gonna get on stage unless you bring people to the show. You know, that's where a lot of these people are starting out. You know, you don't just do you we're not all Roseanne Barr. You don't get to walk in and do one show and suddenly you're on the tonight show. Right, 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 right. More stories like that too with famous people. They never had to go through what we had to go through. And and there's no bringer shows here. Like you can, but who does that shit? You know what I mean? A salute to Big Mike though. Rest in peace. You know, Big Mike passed. Um, he was like one of the kings of bringing shows. But no, man, no. Yeah, you all see, I can't, I'm too old at this shit, man. So Jeremy Sibio, my buddy, he's like, man, dude, he's like, dude, he said, you at these clubs, man, they not about to try to haze you. They gonna give you all the time because they know they can't control your ass. Yeah. They know you ain't gonna tell, they ain't gonna make, you ain't gonna they make you pass out flyers or walk their dogs and shit. I'm not doing that. I might as well just have my own. If you can fit me in there again, I'll jump on, but Dude, I still be working over here, dude. I don't have to rely on you. Did you ever do Garrett Morris's club downtown? No, I didn't. No, I'm not oh. down there. Never made it down there. Wanted to. I did. Oh. It was a fun. It was a fun venue. I did uh, one night. One of the other comics heckled me. One of the other comics heckled me. And Ooh. I don't remember <laughs> if I if if they're still around, man. I I doubt they made it. Oh. But um, somebody, it was, a, it was a new comic, it was a kid, and he heckled me, and um, the crowd actually kind of like turned on him a little bit, because they knew who, they knew he was a comic. And we went outside, and I, I grabbed him, and I'm, I didn't grab him, I'm like, I bring him aside, and I'm like, dude, come on, not cool. And right. Garrett walks up, and mm. he lays into him. Mm. And he turns to me, he's like, Eric? You want me to kick the shit out of him? I will beat him down right here on the sidewalk right now. I'm like, no, Garrett, that's cool. That's cool. Mm. But everybody turned on him. And um, it was a weird experience. But working that club with somebody like Garrett, it was just, it was so much fun. You know, it was, you got these ties back to, you know, history of comedy and, you know, Saturday Night Live and and all of the movies and stuff that he did. So what, um, I got a bunch of friends now that are starting to do the cruise ships. Have you ever considered that? Yeah, you think yeah, you, you, you could do that. Clean. <laughs> <laughs> they got adult cruises. <laughs> uh, yeah, like they said, get 30 minutes clean. And I talked to somebody from out there a couple of weeks ago, and they were like, no, nah, you don't need, some places don't care. They just say what you want to say. I'm like, I doubt that very seriously. Would you but do I, it? Yeah, I do. Hell yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah Harvey. You yeah, go do uh, I, I do the I do the bases, the army bases and all that shit too. Like, yeah. Oh, did you do the USO tour? I love to do that. You just want to work. I just want to work. Like that's this yeah. yeah, this is the money now. Like I don't have anything else. So I have my produce shows and that's it. Like I do I we got a burlesque show coming up. <laughs> I'm hosting. Um we me and my buddy booked. We got a dating show that we made up, and it's like, yeah, and I got other comedy shows. I'm shows on Sunday. I'm about but to start going weekend. Hmm? But your comedy, your comedy is life comedy, man. Your your comedy is comes from your experiences. It comes from the, the, your friends, your family, people you see. Your your uh, skewed vision of the world. You have a way of looking at the world that's just uniquely yours. You yeah. don't go in for like topical stuff. You're not no, you're like not my... current events. That's this no. is not your stuff. No, we never even talked about that. But you noticed that. Thank you. I just um. Yeah. I think those jokes die real quick. Only way I do that, I thought about doing a podcast about that so yeah. I can do the jokes with it and never use them again. Mm-hmm. Because I'm like, those jokes don't last the test of time. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I want I want to be out and somebody to see my show years ago. And be like, man, the Shaq joke, or this happened. I remember you said this. And I, I love that shit, man. Because you were paying attention to me. And it makes sense. You no, know, I love that, but... Current events, I got a joke about Obama. I had to hurry up and make an album so I can have it down. <laughs> so I won't do it no more. You know what I'm saying? And I hate that I can't do it anymore because, you know, he's not even relevant like that anymore. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, that, that's, yeah, I like I like to do jokes that are 
you know, that's close to me. I'm pretty much, yeah. I'm still 25 years old in my bitch, though. I haven't even got past 25, I'm 47. So I haven't even got to, I got 20 some years of other stuff that happened to me that I haven't talked about at all. So you don't want to be the black John Stewart? I do it if somebody writes the jokes. <laughs> We're back to that. <laughs> I do it if show. somebody writes the jokes. Yeah, that, that, that Trevor Noah right now, but you know, like I do it if somebody writes the jokes. But I'm not. A, that's not my stand-up brand. Though, but it bro. doesn't. You don't. You. Don't, it doesn't interest you. It doesn't. Like, do you really find care. humor in it though? Do you find humor you on find the it, news? But it's like I be. I be trying jokes out all the time, and man, I don't. I, I like this shit. I don't uh -uh. reading papers and shit. Like, yeah, I dig it. But that, I'm just. You know, like I said, I'm an improviser. So you go off of whatever the fuck going on, and then you yeah. go. I'm, I'm about to start locking myself in to write the material down. I'm writing the material and doing the material, so I don't have to do them no more. I'm trying to like go to the. My goal is to to exhaust every idea I ever had, mm -hmm. and I can say, all right, I'm done. I can't think of nothing else. But if I go on stage with nothing, I'm, I, I kind of want to bomb. I haven't bombed in a long time, to make me work harder. But I'm going out there with nothing. And it's like, it's still like, y'all laugh. Why y'all laughing at me? I want y'all to boo my ass. No. <laughs> no, but it's just like, yeah, it's, it's yeah, I just I just gotta put the work towards it. I know if I do it, it it'll work out. But I I don't I don't want to get bored with the material no more. But is it harder? Do you think it's harder to find the humor in, you know, like um South Park is an example that comes up every once in a while. I don't know if you're a fan of the show or if you watch it, but I haven't watched it in a long time. But I okay, but one of the things they talk about is it gets harder to be funny because the stuff that they're making fun of has gotten to the point it's so fucking ridiculous that it's hard to make a joke out of it at some point. I mean, it's time to move on to something new. Well, it's like you know, it's hard to make fun of Trump because he's at a certain point it's like it's so if you come up with a ludicrous situation it's not that far off of reality right you know but then people know they style now you know what i mean like you kind of know where they're coming from if your joke is you you know what i'm saying they don't know they want to know more about you if you're if you're the joke you know what i'm saying you're you're the the, the basis of your material they have they want to learn about you with that you got social media now you got these nighttime guys mm. what joke hasn't been said about Trump or whoever is in office, you know what I mean, or whatever current event. Yeah. So it's like then you get people be tweeting. People who tweet are some of the funniest people in the world. Oh, you stole that joke from Twitter? No, I thought of it. They can't take what you what you came up with though. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like if it's a current event thing, I wouldn't be writing it because it'd, it'd be a fly by night bit. I want my bits to last. You want stuff that's personality driven. It's the classic stuff. Like you can go back and listen to a Red Fox album and it's still. Richard Pryor, man. Oh. He's the best. I, I, man, I like Dave. I like Dave Chappelle. <laughs> well, what about that? What about, what about fallen comedy heroes? How, like, how does, so, so here's an example. So I tread lightly, but I'm going to, I'm going to ask it. So you got Bill Cosby. Mm -hmm. Can you separate the comedy from the man? I do. So that you can look at Bill Cosby's comedy and be like, that's gold. Yeah. It's it's like Michael Jackson. It's like, can you take the I'm music away from the man? Jackson. I'm a big fan of both of those guys. Of the, mu of the music? The music, The man. talent. The talent. The talent. The talent. Mike, I, I said this before, and I'm a man. Mike, I'm in Chicago. Mike grew up in Gary, Indiana. So mm -hmm. I had to go take a picture of the mural. I mean, lady watched all the fucking... Janet Jackson thing the other day. I'm a big fan of them. Like they, he's a soundtrack of my life until he passed. I literally, when he passed, I felt like a relative died. Yeah. I sit there in shock, like, damn, man, what the fuck? What we gonna do now? But some people just don't need to leave the house. <laughs> like I think Mike should stay with his parents. Joe wouldn't have had them kids over there like that. Like, but they they wanted to take Mike down. I, I think it was, I'm not a really conspiracy guy. But when he got a hold to that Beatles music and they asked to buy it, and he said, no, he's out. We got to get rid of this guy. And that's what happened. I, I believe that. Hmm. But it don't matter now. He's not here. Rest nah, it peace. doesn't. The king, but Bill Cosby? <laughs> that's Unnecessary. a whole big can of worms right there. <laughs> His um, documentary came out. I can't even pull it up. I'm going to have to go to my mother's house and watch it. But 
Oh, the new one. The, we need to talk about Bill Cosby. The, yes, that's yeah. out. I watched the old one when he they before he went to jail. I watched the older one and just hearing how these women were talking, and I don't even say shit. Oh, they they are. He didn't have to do that. Yeah, he was the biggest star in the world. Not not just the biggest black star in the world. He was the biggest star in the world. He did not have to drug these women to do that. And what made it bad, he's dogging other black people out for not getting, having their shit together. And he out here doing this bullshit. Mm -hmm. That's why people, a lot of people turned against him. Like a lot of black people ain't cool with that dude. But he's done so much. He's done so much for schools, education, TV. There'll be no Thursday night. There'd be no Thursday night without him. I don't care what you who was friends. No, fuck friends. Cosby Show was running that shit. And it was like, yo, whoever came on Thursday was hot. It was like, it was like a damn alley-oop. Like they dunking it right through. Nobody wants to see Lisa Bonet be funny. Like, you know what I'm saying? They put that show right after that. It was the number two in the country. That, that first season sucked. But it was still number two in the country. They made it work later, but that was his conception. That was yeah. his show. And then Cheers is after that. Seinfeld or Night Court, whatever. Those shows are hits. Mainly, I think mainly because of that. They wanted to cancel Cheers. But they had it on Thursday. The shit blew up. Mm -hmm. He's responsible for that. But there's no- How do you reconcile that? How do you, you reconcile can't. that? You can't, because you've turned your back on your people. You dogged us out. And I feel bad for him, man. But you got greedy. He's fucking yeah. greedy, man. That's greedy. Do you think it was him or do you think it was the position he got in? He saw the power he could wield over women and he went with it? Or do you think that's just at a core, that's who he is? I, I, hey man, I'm going to tell you this with me. I don't... I know I know it's probably weird. He probably abused his power or whatever. I know women. I know women with men with power. And it's like, not saying I got the power or nothing. I just know mm -hmm. how that is. And it's like... Damn, I say this. I was just telling somebody this story the other day. I was in this movie called Say the Last Dance. Remember this movie? Mm -hmm. uh, Lopez, I right? This, I was in this movie. First, first audition, first acting part ever for me. I grabbed Carrie Washington's ass. She grabbed my penis, whatever. We shot that scene one day. Had 60 takes. It took the whole fucking day. We're in a club. And... I'm like, yo, can I go home? Like, I ain't know how long movie days was. You know, I'm ready to go home. Like, what the fuck? They just stand out here. You're all right. And then, then you know, how long fucking sets are. Like, shit. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there. So they go, we're going to shoot this other scene. Then we're wrap you out of here. So I'm they like, stay where you are. So they shot a scene across the room. We're in the fucking club. There's 300 people. Man. And I ain't comparing myself to Bill Cosby. None of that shit. As far as the stardom at all. I got offered so much sex within those three hours I had to stand and wait from strange women who was who were on me because I was on in this movie touching on this girl they didn't even know yet nobody knew who Carrie Washington was and I mean like where's they like where's your where's your trailer at and then I switched the thing off and put another chick next to me and she like put my hand in her, her shit like her pants and shit like what the fuck like yo I'm trying not to get fired. It's one of the reasons why I didn't go. <laughs> but the same thing at the same time, it's like, I'm nobody. Yeah. This guy was the king of TV. Who ain't going? I don't know. And he just abused the power. He could have said no. Because what well, made, it, made it more fucked up for him is because he, he celebrated marriage. He mm -hmm. celebrated education. He celebrated marriage. He talked about his wife all the time. So to hear that he's even, even accused of it, it's like, get out of here. Fuck out of here. Then he like, then he does the shit on the beginning of the show. Saying, um, you get on Spanish fly, blah, blah, blah. You see that? Mm -hmm. I remember that was Larry King. I'm like, what is he talking about? You built your fucking wife since you was in your 20s. Then when it came out, he did that. I thought about that shit. And it's yeah. like, uh, he ain't going to jail. It's not Bill Cosby. He's too old. They ain't gonna let him go. People start coming out, dropping this shit. And it's like, ah. Uh. And there's one, I'm gonna say this, and you can go to the next thing. 
It's the chick at the top of the trailer, the glasses, light skin. I seen her on another special. The women Bill Cosby violated was special. What the fuck it was? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's on the show. I watched the Cosby. Me and my brother watched the Cosby show religiously. When he got convicted, I bought the box set of the Cosby show because they might not ever sell it again. I got it that day for $20. <laughs> we watch it so much. When it comes on, we guess what it's about without reading the what it's about. Oh, this is when Rudy gets sick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching this shit and the girl's talking. I'm like, that lady look familiar. And she's like, yeah, I was on the show. Like, yeah, she was on the show. And they show a clip of her on the show. And I'm like, she was on there more than once. She said the first time she was on it, they showed when she was on there, she played a cop. Mm-hmm. And um, he said, he called her back to the room. And he uh, opens up his robe. He's the only one in the room. He opens up his robe like, okay, now we're gonna have sex. So we'll make love or whatever. I'm like, oh, that's the girl from that. But she played Theo's teacher on another episode. So I'm watching it. So after I watched that, a couple of days later, that comes on. Well, matter of fact, I'm sorry, go back. But she said that, she said, I said, I'm, I'm never gonna do, I'm never gonna do the show again and blah, blah. But she did do the show again. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, so it's convenient when you get other jobs, but at the same time, it's like, he's wrong for doing what he was doing. You knew he was married. You didn't have to do it. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what the fuck? Like, okay, so you used it for yourself, but you didn't come to start it. You wanted to be. So now it's wrong. But at the same time, he's fucked up too. So I'm like, this is probably the most you ever gonna get out of me with this shit. Cause I know you only talk about it. But it's like, he abused the power though. He definitely abused the power. If, he, if all that shit is true, he abused the power. She's the one who claims that everybody on set knew. I was yes, reading the end. Yeah, yeah she's right. like anybody who's, who was on that set who said that they didn't know what was going on. It's full of shit. That's she's her. Like, Everybody knew. That's her. But I'm like, you was on there twice. So y'all had some kind of relationship going on. Hmm. And you knew it was wrong, but you you thinking about your shit. So I was like, what the fuck? And there was another girl on there. She's like, yeah, they said he was going to help me with my career. Um, not on, I, I don't know what, I don't know if she's popping up on this new one, but the one I saw. He, I came by the house, we read some lines, and next thing I know, I'm asleep. It says she crawled to the bathroom with her pants on one leg type shit. Oh, she the Quaaludes? Me. Huh? He was proud of that. His whole uh, Quaaludes, Quaaludes, the yeah, Lego. Yes, he gave her the shit. Them. And then she like, she's at the, crawl to the bathroom, throwing, about to try to throw up in the sink. Next thing you know, she said, he put his penis on her shoulder. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Now we're gonna finish what we're doing. Then she does the shit. He leaves her money. She said she confronted. She wanted to confront him. She knew he was in Atlantic City. She flew there and she said she thought about it. Like if I say tell my mother now, Bill Cosby violated me, they're not gonna believe me. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna go confront him. So she gets to the show. She didn't say nothing. They showed him take a picture and he just smiled with her. So it's got to be rough. And he knew what kind of power he had. He just abused it. Yeah. If it's true, if those stories are true, he, he abused the power. If those, if, if it's all bullshit, it was somebody trying to take advantage. Because the, the stories were all the same. Somebody trying to get into show business. He was the man. Yeah. So, damn. If it was bullshit, that Spanish fly story does not help. Because I remembered that when he said it. Like, he used to do, he had, a, he had a routine about it. Didn't he have an actual bit about, I want, I, I feel like he had an actual stand-up bit about Spanish fly. I don't know. I don't know. You know. Back in the early days. So, I mean, you've got him and then you got, you know, you got Louis CK and his stuff. And, you Louis know. Louis CK was the man. Why is remember, remember, Noah Louis was jerking off in front of, you know, other comedians and stuff. And, you know, he's trying to come back. It's uh, oh, well, he's back. He, he came here um, about six, seven months ago, sold out in less than 30 minutes. People are forgiving, yeah, but he has a following, like, people love him regardless. Like, you know, what I'm saying if he came, if Bill Cosby came back, I'll go see the show. <laughs> I go see it. I want to hear, I want to hear about jail, you know what I'm saying? I want to hear about what the fuck he I did that tour. Remember, he was doing a tour like right during the court case or right after he uh, right. he actually was doing shows. And he had right. protesters that would show up, and I'm going. I'll be there. 
I'll go watch that shit. I'm gonna what is he? Man. He's like 110 now, isn't he? He's like 80, 80, 87, 88, something like that. That's like 110 in comedy years. It's really, you know. Oh, yeah. And look, they're born at 36, so you do the math. God dang. Yeah. It's just crazy. Older than Richard Pryor. Four years older than Richard Pryor, so yeah. I mean, that it's so, it's so bizarre to think about because you're dealing with a guy who he helped build comedy, you know, when it comes to he, television. He He's by far one of the greatest comedians ever. And, How do you rectify that? How do you sit there and you're just, you're like, this is a man who developed how people tell jokes now. This is, this is a man who developed how to tell a story, you know? And then, oh, by the way, he's been accused of raping untold women, but literally sitcoms as we know them were developed by him. He's, um, yeah, he's the, he's, he's one of the, Definitely one of the greatest ever. Be one of the goats, as they say. Yeah, he has been tarnished because of that. Because of that shit. And you talking about Michael Jackson? Those guys said it wasn't true, and nobody put that shit in the news. Even at the Oprah interview with these guys, oh, I was going to say it wasn't true. And why the fuck you waste our time with this bullshit? You trying to get paid? But people have been canceled for even less. People have been canceled yes. for so far less, and it just. Yeah. It feels like, well, Michael Jackson is worth how many? Had the estate is worth how many billions of dollars? A lot. I don't know. You know, mm-hmm. so money wins. Yes, it's all about Every money. Time. It's all about money in the end, dude. It's all about your value. They say it all the time. Jim Rohn. I listened to him a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, yeah, it's all about your value. What can you yeah. bring to the table? These guys bring a lot. These guys are very influential. Influential. Like these guys are important. Mm-hmm. And too big just, to fail huh too big to fail yeah too, so too like, big okay. to get arrested yeah so i'm like okay no we need this shit we gotta make money like now like you know people getting sick but everything back open like no nah, we still gotta stay open because we need our money they're not canceling football because people are catching this shit this is too much money Super Bowl. they're not canceling the super bowl because people <laughs> sick. you know what I'm saying? like isn't that like, weird <laughs> it's like it's like we're almost we're a million people will have died in march they're saying Right. And, and, you know, we've gone through all this. We've gone through the lockdowns. We've gone through the quarantines. We've gone through the political divide. All of this stuff has happened. And we're, there's a portion of our society is trying to pretend like life goes on. Right. <laughs> it's like yeah. we gotta, remember the, the bubbles when they were doing the basketball stuff. And it's like, we're right. going to pretend that there's actually people in the stands. We're going to yeah, pretend that everything's normal. Home. <laughs> and people are at home watching the game. Like, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it. Out you know i try to watch the cubs and i'm like i, I can't watch this because it's like not not the real thing it's like right. baseball light you know it's like right. it's yeah. it's it's a substitution yeah you need the people man yeah but yeah. it's like comedy it's the same thing it's like everybody did the youtube stand-ups did you do any you, you, no did you try it? no i it? had friends who did them and i'm just like i tried to be supportive but i'm like it's just it's not, I didn't do my first Zoom call until probably late 2020. Mm. You know, I'm, I, I didn't get into all that, but they're huge, man. The one, the open mics, there's more open mics in LA now than ever. Yeah, there I heard. I heard. That's a bunch of them. Augustino, out. I did his podcast and he told me how it is ran now. Like, oh, that's yeah. interesting. You can just there's like, a hookah lounge that has like a really big one now. On the yeah, ballot. yeah, like an uh, hourly one now. Like you can, Mm-hmm. sign in for the hour and then you stay for that and then you can go to the next thing i'm like what the fuck like that's interesting yeah i don't that's i don't know i haven't seen the quality of the comics like i don't know what the next generation coming up is um i've seen some pretty good ones on tiktok i've seen some pretty good voices that i'm like i'm looking forward to seeing how they develop but it's like you and i are saying it's like you got to get in front of that crowd you got to learn how to feed off that energy you gotta you know yeah dance yeah, I, when we no. talked about how bad how high me paying for the shit it, it literally i'm glad i did kind of start there yeah um you know because of camaraderie i think some of the best because it's comics from everywhere like you know there people from everywhere in la mm. everybody's from different spots like you you here and you get like one brand you get a few different types of people but it's still kind of the same flavor out there it was just something different everybody was just trying to make it and it was okay mm-hmm. to pay the five dollars and do five minutes, seven and whatever, bringer shows and shit. 
Yeah. He just like, Psh, man, I do my own damn show. You know what I mean? Like I ain't yeah. rock 30, whatever. So um, I miss the most thing, the thing I miss out there is the camaraderie. And yeah, and then seeing the new guys come up. Cause you would see it, like I'm saying, I'm, I'm happy to see like, oh, yo, this guy right here gonna be something else. Like watch out for yeah. this. Or I gotta work harder. I gotta follow this guy. I gotta work harder. Like the competition. I'm not saying the competition is whack, but it's like, nah, being there was just different. I think we all was just going at it. Like doing five, doing open mics, it mattered. Cause we were trying to be great. You know what I mean? Here, especially after spending the money, that was motivation. That's when five dollars, I'm about to do my best. Here it's like, ah, oh, nonchalant. They trying to entertain their friends and shit. And it's like, <sighs> not cool with that. Did we had sometimes I remember like the camaraderie was great if people were kind of in your circle. Like we all had our friends that we did shows with that we were supportive of. But man, there were there were other people. It was cutthroat in some ways because it was it was almost this feeling that only so many people su could succeed. So, you know, if you were, I found it anyway, if it wasn't somebody who was in your immediate circle, like your buddies, your friends, people that you came up with, you know, there were other people that were just like, like, remember we would do some of um, Marty's shows and there were people in there who were just like, you suck. And it wasn't like a constructive criticism in any way. It was just literally like, <laughs> they're like one person would laugh. <laughs> like that's right, a win right right <laughs> but there's so much though it's it's over the top I, I remember when he started that room i was like man he called me to ask me to help i was like the first guy he hit that's why i was able to not i ain't had to pay over there that's why i was always over there mm -hmm. and he told me he was going to do it every day i'm like every day for how long fucking five o'clock to nine really okay you doing open mics and they get to go again i'm like this is shit is overkill it is too much yeah. Then he got the open other rooms going. And then next thing you know, it was a party place. He might have smoking weed and shit, drinking. By the time it was over, it was like, oh man, this they done ran my man out of business. We had the patio, we had the patio mic that patio, would be set we had up. the back we have room. another show out there. Yeah. Had the back room. But that place, when I, I started hitting the road after I started doing that place, and it really, you know, it, it helped me, helped me out a lot. I'm not mad at it, but at the same time, it's like, oh, they abused it. And it was like an overkill, but we saw some of the some of the greatest, I remember one night we did a show. I don't even know if you was there that day. I think you were. It was like 12 people in a row. And we like had to match each other. Like, yeah, that, that's that's what I missed. Like, ah, you know what I'm saying? I used to ball and shit when I was younger. And that was yeah. the closest I had to that. Stand up when you when you on a showcase show and you see the lineup and they they kill before you and make you work like you want to you see the lineup oh, I'm gonna smoke their ass tonight just just yeah. to make it fun and competitive for myself that was one of my favorite nights in there because I'm like we were like everybody was just beasting we had a few of those we had uh, one of the Wayans came then one night were you there for yeah that? Marlon was there Marlon, Marlon, Marlon was there Damon came, Damon came too and he um, was talking about he he had a whole bit about what if my fingers were penises. Do you remember that? I, that, I think he was <laughs> nothing against Marlon, man, but I think he was high as hell. But he he was sitting there and he was talking. He's like, what if all my fingers were dicks? Oh. <laughs> he just did this whole thing on like, bah. It's like, I could have 10 women. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what's, yeah. what's, what's, so you got the podcast, you got the shows. What's, what's your next big conquer? What are you going to, you just going to concentrate on the shows? I'm a the one man show. show. One man show. Um, I'm trying to figure out a name for it, but we went over it, man. And it's more, it's a lot more serious <laughs> than I thought. I like it's probably like 60% serious and 40% comedy. And it's like, I, you know how you feel like you want to cry mm -hmm. and you don't, you have a fucking headache. That's how I felt. I felt like I had a headache for like three and a half hours after we were done rehearsing the first time. I was like, shit, yeah. I don't know if I'll make this, man. Um, but I do want that show to succeed, the podcast shit. And I'm going to hit the road. I'm ready to headline. We have the comedy albums coming out. So, yeah, it's me. So what's the, the the woman show? What's it more like like a Leguizamo kind of show? Kind of a little bit more introspective? or I don't want to say too much about it. I don't want to take my idea. Fair enough. Um, but it's it's pretty much me going back. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, 
it's pretty much me going back to it's like a therapy session in a sense. I just say that. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I talk about the good times and the bad times and why I'm the way I am. So it's like um this is pretty much I think I'm gonna call it session one. It's gonna be a three parter. Um first part is about just my life in general, and then second one be my comedy career, and the uh, third one probably gonna be um me with women. That's a scary topic. It is, but it's like <laughs> no, it's some it's some funny shit in there. But at the same time, it's like it's some it's a reason. I don't have kids. I'm not married, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, why? You know what I'm saying? Like, I that's a different life. I'm in the same boat. I'm the, we're kind yeah, of the I same age. We don't have kids. Though. I think it's a show business thing, though, bro. Like we doing this shit, and it's kind of hard to even want to settle down with anybody because they don't understand their life. Like we're okay with not having for ourselves. When you're responsible, somebody. If I, if I had a baby before I moved to California, I would never probably came. Yeah. I probably was stuck right here in Chicago. And my one of my biggest fears, bro, is working a job I hate with a wife I don't care too much for, some kids I like a little bit, <laughs> and having to go bowling on Sunday and drinking old cans of old style beer. That was a dream. That was a nightmare of mine when I was a teenager. That's so Midwest. Yes, and I said, I don't want to be stuck with this shit. Yeah. No, nah, I can't do it. So the shows, one man show, um, start submitting for headline status um, for these clubs, uh, the podcast. I want to get back on these sketches too. Yeah. Two or produce my shows. That's a lot of shit. Like, I don't really Are you going to film the one man show? Are you going to release it? Uh, yeah, I have to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to film it first to, to submit, you know. Mm-hmm. After that, you know, we'll do a run until we have it tight, tight. And um, yeah, might do it then. Yeah. Yeah. But That's I gotta a, do another comedy album too, and a whole nother hour. How how do you put them out? What do you uh you do them yourself, right? You actually Yeah, me and my brother, my brother edits them and um yeah, yeah we just put them out. You can distribute Where do you them. put them out? You through like iTunes and the normal uh, album? TuneCore, TuneCore, and oh, okay. everything. Yeah, it's another it's another way too. My friend Jeremy, Jeremy Sibio told me there was another one. I think Jamar Neighbors just dropped like five last year. Oh, like man. five albums last year. Like this dude was just sick with it. So uh I'm like I'm gonna at least I'm gonna try to drop every like five months though, something. You got an empire you're building. You got Yeah, it's just me. Like it's just me, man. All these years and, and people not believing or uh, I didn't recognize mm-hmm. what the fuck was going on. I probably missed opportunities and shit. But yeah. but I kind of I gotta make everything on me though. Like if I succeed, it's it's, my, it's it's me that made it happen. If I bomb, it's me that made it happen. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I gotta take more responsibility for my career because throughout, I've always been a team player, and I love like having people who was on the same agenda I was. But they, in the end, they wasn't even a lot of those people wasn't even that that confident in themselves. So mm. fuck me, you know what I'm saying? It was okay to just drop me. So I'm like, nah, nobody care about your shit more than you do. So yeah, you gotta be selfish. So after my grandmother died like two years ago, I'm like, you know what? I can actually be the comedian I want to be, the artist yeah. I want. Is there a level? Is there like a level that you get to where you're, you kind of feel like if I get here, I've accomplished something or, or is it just, is it about the journey for you? I don't have a, a end. I, I think... I have to get tired of it. I don't, I don't see a, you ever getting tired of. of, of I, that's why I'm gonna try to put myself to the test. Every five months, something will be released, and I'm gonna work my ass off till I'll say, "Okay, I'm done." Yeah. Until I say I'm done, that's how long I do it. And this, I could have been quit. Mm-hmm. I've had like three careers with motherfuckers this long, man. Twenty some years in show business, and it's like I'm not famous, famous. I'm not famous at all, like to people, you know. But I tell the stories like what. The fuck you do? You hung out with them? You was in what? And so I was like, yeah, I don't even trip on it though. That was my guy that was doing the play, doing the um show with me. He was asking me, he said some shit. Can we talk about all the bad shit that happened to me? Mm-hmm. Oh, he asked me when I started show business, when I started Second City, I told him I didn't tell my family. Cause I lived in a house with like eight people at one time. And I'm the little, the smallest person there, other than my brother, you know, and they were hypercritical. 
So imagine, you know what I'm saying? If you're the only child, ain't nobody there to tell you that you can't. It's different. But if you there and I fuck up and you got eight people telling you you ain't shit, how did that make you feel? And I was sensitive to shit. I was a timid ass kid. Mm-hmm. So I ain't gonna tell them shit. So come to find out, I do the show. My friend drive me down there. I'm there and I do a um a, um outreach program for a week, and then they have a fucking um they have a showcase show on Friday and Saturday. The guy that drove me down, I told him he brought my buddy and my buddy's now wife at the time to my show. I still wasn't gonna tell my family shit. He goes back to my house and he tells everybody. <laughs> they come to the show and uh, I gotta perform now. It's a packed house now. The first night it was probably like 10 people. This night it had to be at least, um, it was in a skybox. So it had to be like at least a hundred people in it. And I jump out, I made them laugh and I got the approval for them, from them. Like, okay, I can do this. How old are you at this point? I'm 20, 22, 23. And this is, in, this is in Chicago? In Chicago. But I'm still okay. concerned about what they think of me. You know what I'm saying? I just didn't want yeah. to ridicule because they dogged me out so much when I was a kid. It wasn't even, wasn't even bad, bad to look back at it. But as a kid that was timid, it's like, yo, what the fuck? Like, why y'all coming down on me? Like, I ain't this shit. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to do something different. So where were you after yeah. after this happened? Where are you in your head? Like, does it change you? Do you suddenly feel validated? Does it? I felt validated. Felt validated. Yeah. And they made me go through the rest of the class. I'm like, dude, I just performed with all these people and shit. Like, no, you got to go through the rest of the class. And I wound up meeting some, this lady um, named Sean. And I joined their group. And I wound up moving to LA a couple of years after that. We started yeah. touring and doing like um, seminars and shows at colleges. Like, we were getting paid for this shit. I'm like, yeah. this is a career. You know, and we moved to LA, and that's that's why that's how I got there. But the criticism, it wasn't like I would rather them punch me in the face and get it over. I don't like. I didn't like how they did that. My family, you know, just as far as like they just it's, just critic just criticize you, man. Like so, I can I have tough skin from that shit though. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, ain't nothing they can say to me now. Like nobody, I'm gonna do what the fuck I want. But that that did develop me. So I forgot how you got to this when going into that story. But yeah, I don't I don't think I'm gonna stop until I forgot what the initial question. And my mom is calling while we're doing this. I got hey, mom. Uh. <laughs> it's amazing that she called right when you told that story. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Moms know. They always know somehow. Right. Um, yeah. So you I'm, have you're you're. Answer this then. Be, be, you're a happy man, dude. You you are enjoying your life. You enjoy what you do. Right. You're in a good space. Yeah, I'm a little stressed because it, it, this is not easy. But when I'm yeah, on but stage, you're doing what you love. Like, wouldn't you rather be stressed thing. about that than working in a cubicle or something? You know, that's the thing. I, oh, because I've had every bad job known to man living in LA and you working, I'm working construction temporary sometimes mm. and all that shit. Like sometimes they get office jobs, but most of the times we're out there. And I remember like 2000, like nine, mm. it was Christmas time. And I was trying to get some money. Like we got this job for you. Can you come do it? I'm like, yeah, I'm about trying to go back, come back to Chicago. And, um, you know, I always came back for in the middle of the summer and for Christmas. So this time it was Christmas. And they're like, we got this job at this mall. So I'm thinking, we I just had to go sweep around or whatever. Like, no. And I get there, like, okay, well, here. And they give me a, a mop bucket and a sponge, some soap and shit. I said, clean this mirror on the lawn. And it was a the mirror of the United States. And I'm scrubbing this shit. East State, like, this shit is huge. Like, it covered probably. Not a half block, probably like about a quarter of a block almost. Mm-hmm. But I'm like on my knees, cleaning this shit off. They didn't rope this shit off. So as I'm cleaning this shit, little kids are coming and stepping on it. I never felt more humiliated in my life. Not, not, well, that was the last time I felt humiliated like that. Yeah. I literally was in, I was in tears. I had tears go down my face. 
And it was like, I can't keep doing this shit. Mm -hmm. What are we doing this for? Fuck that. I get a chance to do this shit the way I want to. I'm going to do it. So now's the time. And this is years ago. This is like 10, 12 years ago I'm telling you about. Yeah. I never want to work for this motherfucker. Never want to. I can't work on somebody else's dream. I'm too fucking old for that shit. I'll be using them. That's all. Like, I go to Amazon. It'd be like, okay, I got six months. Just because I'm trying to pay off these credit cards and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? That'll be it. But my mind is always be on comedy. And then, same time, I got proof. I got checks from shit I do. Like, this shit can be... All you got to do is do it. Yeah. What That's keeps you going? Huh? So what keeps you going at times like that when you're doing the mural? And how do you keep that fire going? I'm just not a stop. I don't stop, man. Fuck, I'm going to go back. You don't have me going to... How long are we talking for? <laughs> it's like two hours. Uh, uh, I remember being a kid and told you, hell, a 10-minute shit, you know... Um. We used to play, was, uh, my, my neighborhood was all guys. And I'm the little guy, you know, I'm the young dude, probably one more other guy. And I think they used to bring me out because they can met, have enough players to have teams and shit. Mm -hmm. We used to play football almost every day. I used to get hurt every day. Bleeding on the knees and bumping into the light pole type shit. And, fucking up my arm and all this stuff, man. But I went at home and I never wanted people to call me, call me a punk or lazy. I used to hear that, I used to hear lazy all the time as a kid. I lived in the house with eight people. They said lazy all the time. Great family. But when they got mad at you, everybody ain't 100% nice. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. they call you lazy. They ain't do shit right. You, you lazy. You lazy. I never wanted to be called lazy. I used to go in the house, bleed, scratched up. I came back out, finished the game. Never thought nobody paid attention to that shit. I'm like nine, ten. I went, they decided to have a football team at the park. Got hurt then too. We played the games. I never played. I'm in every practice. Never played. Years later, I'm about to graduate high school. What year was this? Years later, I'm about to graduate, like six, seven years later. Um, the guy that used to be the uncle of one of the guys who used to play, I used to play football with, he used to artificial quarterback. He used to be the guy that just quarterback and just threw us the ball for both teams. Mm-hmm. He used to be at the park when we was on the football team. So he saw me come up. He seen me. Well, he might have me in tears. <laughs> he seen me um, years later when I'm about to graduate. And he was like, man, what's up, man? Man, what you doing with yourself, bro? I'm about to graduate high school right now. He said, man, he said, yo, he said, hey, Whatever you decide to do, you're going to be great at it. He said, if you was a kid bleeding and stuff, you will always come back outside. He said, I've never seen that in anybody. And I was like, man, you don't know the impression you leave on people. No. And the funny shit about that, I don't want to let him down. <laughs> I don't want to let him down. I don't. Isn't, it, isn't it weird, like, the, the people that pop up in your life that, you, that leave an impression? And that you don't want to let down, like all these years later. Yeah, well, no, for him to tell me that, I'm like, yo, I ain't know people even gave a fuck about me like that, man. Yeah. Didn't know. Like I'm saying, do the comedy shit now. To not be out there, like, man, 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 we miss you, bro. Like Dean Del Rey, me and Dean Rey, me and Del Rey is we cool, but I ain't expect no message from Twitter, man. I miss seeing you, bro. How you doing? Like, what the fuck? I ain't know we were that tight. We cool though. I popped back up. Oh shit! Like we, I popped up in, uh, <laughs> I popped up in Amsterdam. I ain't let them people know I was in town. I pop up in there, look through the window. I see like five people. I open the door. Cornelia and Jackson McQueen. Like, oh shit! What the fuck? And the people that didn't know me, like, who the fuck is this guy? For y'all to go that <laughs> crazy over. But it's like you don't. We. I, I never been.
to college. That was the closest thing to college to me. Mm. And they fucking everybody fucking celebrities and funny and shit. So I'm proud of you. Everybody from Marty's, everybody just still doing what they do, man. That's what the fuck this shit's about. There you go. That's a great place to end it right there. Yeah. We can do it. what we do, man. Because I don't want to make you cry anymore. No, I, I, <laughs> I ain't cry, cry, man. <laughs> <In my eye. laughs> so, so where can people, uh, where should I send people so they can check out your stuff? What's the best hub to go to? Uh, YouTube, man. I'm trying to build that shit. I kind of get monetized because Jade is a big motherfucker and he might come back yeah. and kill me. I don't get that shit up. Um, comedian Ronnie Ray on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Comedian Ronnie Ray on um, IG. And Ronnie Ray, comedian Ronnie Ray on Facebook. So yeah, I'll put I'll, all of the links are in the show notes, so everybody can click on through. Right, and, the website and I haven't everything. been working on, but it's Ronnie Ray comedian on there, so it's reversed. Okay. I'll it. make sure they're all in there, dude. Yeah, it's been on. it's yeah, been so so much fun catching up with you. I'm yeah, glad you're doing well. Thank you, you too, man. Yeah, I see you. Yeah, you got a little money back there. You got a lot of ar- <laughs> archives in the back and shit. So yeah, that's a little, little those are cool. mine, man. I painted those. That's what oh, I. Shit, that's what I did. To, yeah, that's what I did to try and stay sane through this entire thing. I, my okay. mom's a painter. My mom, you got it. You you got a phone call from your mom. Mom's yes. the best, man. She sent yes. me this big box. She's a painter. She's been painting for decades. She's like, you need to do something or you're gonna go insane. So I started yeah. painting. Yeah, so, mom's coming to all my shows and shit. Just in the back, uh, we talk filthy. It's amazing. Mom's are the best. <laughs> <laughs>